Hey traders, it's Imri and I'm really excited about today's video which will be about channeling. So channeling is something that I see a lot of traders attempt but uh, very rarely do I see them apply channeling uh, consistently in, in a manner that makes sense to me. So what is channeling? Channeling is effectively placing price action within two parallel lines. Now oftentimes you will see a move that looks like it can be contained within parallel lines. Uh, here's a great example. So this move right here looks like it can be contained within parallel lines, all right? But so what? What does that mean? And that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. We'll be placing channeling within the context of the Elliott Wave theory, all right? So channeling can be used to forecast movements in price. Uh, it, it can also be used to help confirm when one wave is ended or when a trend is ended and when another wave uh, begins. So channeling is a very useful part of my overall toolkit as an analyst and as a trader. So we're going to dive into it and you're going to see how remarkably simple channeling can be and how with a bit of practice you too can do this every single time. Now what's important to note is the chart I've picked. I picked the euro and you'll notice that we are working with a couple different degrees of trend. Black waves one, two, three, and four are complete, which means that we're still waiting for wave five to end. Wave five will end most likely once we make a new high above here. It's, it's possible that we get what's called a truncated fifth wave where we don't make a new high, but that is rare. It is not likely to happen. As a sidebar, this is a very important point. In trading, it is very important to go with what is more likely to happen than what is less likely to happen, okay? You're playing the odds. Remember that. That's why it doesn't matter if price works out exactly the way you thought it would or if it doesn't quite work out perfectly. It doesn't matter. If you do the right thing over time, you'll get it right more often than you'll get it wrong, right? That, that, is, that is literally uh, one of the most straightforward, most important, yet most often ignored concepts in trading. We don't have crystal balls. We don't know with 100% certainty what is going to happen next. But utilizing proper rules and guidelines, we know with a high degree of probability what is likely to happen next. It's an important distinction, very important distinction. So the reason that I wanted to work with this chart is because we don't have a complete white wave five yet at the highest degree of trend I've labeled here. And that means that I can draw a, a final terminating channel to show you how I can anticipate the end of wave five. However, we do have five complete waves, uh, blue wave one, two, three, four, and five, which are simply the sub waves of black wave three. And in that context, I can show you how channeling works and the power of channeling, all right, for a completed Elliott wave cycle. Uh, so I'm just gonna drop down our time frames a little bit. Um, maybe the eight hour is kind of a sweet spot here. Yeah, that'll work nicely. All right, so the first channel that we're going to take a look at is the base channel. The base channel can be drawn once we have a completed waves one and two. So we have wave one here and then blue wave two here. So what I do is I start drawing my channel from the beginning of wave one to the end of wave two. I then take the parallel of that channel to the end of wave one. And you'll notice here that we break out of the base channel. The base channel breakout is very important because it kind of confirms, not kind of, it confirms that wave three is underway, all right? Take a look at how picture perfect this is. This is textbook. We break out of the base channel, we come back to retest it as support, and then we launch to complete wave three, all right? That this is, textbook. This is exactly what you want to see. All right. So the base channel, the breakout of the base channel helps me confirm that wave three is underway. The next channel that we draw is known as the trend channel. You start off by drawing from the end of wave one, you take it to the end of wave three, and then you take that parallel line to the end of wave two. The trend channel is really important because once we break the lower boundary of that trend channel, it signifies to us that wave four is underway. That's the main purpose of this trend channel or the one, three channel, as I call it. Uh, 
once we break the 1 3 channel, it gives us confirmation that wave four is underway. That's all the purpose it serves. As you'll see in a moment, the base channel has a couple more uses um, that are really cool. The trend channel simply tells us that wave four is underway. Uh, so you'll notice, you know, let's say, how do, well, what if we didn't know that wave three ended here? What if we thought wave three ended here, which is fine. We can, we can draw to there and then we can take it, uh, take the parallel line to there. Well, you'll notice we made a new high here. We, we didn't break the bottom of the trend channel. We made a new high, so we can simply drag it to here. That's fine. We didn't break the bottom of the trend channel. We made a new high, so I can drag it to that point. And then lo and behold, we broke out of the lower boundary of the trend channel, uh, thereby confirming that wave four is in fact underway. Once the trend channel has served its purpose, I really just delete this off my chart. Now I'm gonna go back to the base channel. The base channel is so cool, guys and I'm gonna show you uh, exactly why in just a moment. So wave four will often find support off the base channel, either off the upper boundary or the middle boundary in an uptrend. Very rarely, uh, I shouldn't say very rarely, but it's less common that wave four finds support on the lowest boundary line of the trend channel. Most often it finds support on the upper boundary or on the middle boundary. And you can see here, this is again textbook, we just ping off of the upper boundary line uh, to complete wave four, wave four of three, right? And here is A, here is B, here is C. And then once wave four is complete, we can really delete the base channel and we can focus on the final channel, the terminating channel. The terminating channel is used to forecast the end of wave five. So you draw the terminating channel by starting from the end of wave two, taking it to the end of wave four, and then taking a parallel line to the end of wave three. And you'll notice on my channels, I've got three lines. I've got the uh, middle line, and in trading view, if you just open the settings for your channels, you'll see that I have the middle line checked. You, know, you can uncheck it if you want, but as you see here, um, in a couple of these channels, that midline is pretty important. Okay, now you'll see that this wasn't uh, what I would call a picture perfect midline reversal, but we couldn't really pull away from this midline here uh, before wave five of three ended. And then we had that reversal for wave four, all right? You'll see that price, the midline really acted as a magnet here and, and kept drawing prices uh, towards it. If we open our RSI indicator here, you'll also know that there was this bearish divergence, right, over that same area uh, where prices first met the midline. So there are lots of technical clues that suggested that this midline was going to function as a great area of reversal. And then of course, we had the Elliott wave pattern known as an ending diagonal. For you chart patterns gu pattern guys, this is known as a rising wedge. Either way, it is a reversal signal. Okay, so just to recap, we had the base channel. We drew the base channel by starting from the end, sorry, from the beginning of wave one to the end of wave two, and drawing a parallel line to the end of wave one. We drew our trend channel, starting from the end of wave one to the end of wave three, and taking it to the end of wave two. And then we finally had our terminating channel, which we draw by starting from the end of wave two taking it to the end of wave four, and taking the parallel line to the end of wave three. You don't need to have all these channels on your chart uh, at once. It, it clutters it up like this and makes it hard to read. You can work with one channel at a time, just remember to bust out that base channel to try and help forecast the end of wave four. Now channels are great, they're fantastic, but they work best in conjunction with your other tools and strategies that, that, you should have, um, that you should have as a trader. And in fact, I've given you uh, one of those really important tools, which is the Fibonacci relationships between waves. So check this out. For the, uh, you know, what's a good example? There's two good examples on this chart right here. If we look at that, uh, at the base channel first, we look at where we found support, wave four. Okay, so remember one of the more common Fibonacci relationships uh, for wave four 
is that it is usually a 38.2% correction, if not a little bit shallower, of wave three. Right? We get really close to the 38.2. We don't quite touch it, but we do touch the top of that baseline. However, another common relationship for, um, for a wave four retracement is a 23.6% retracement. I don't have that on my chart because it's just such a shallow retracement that it's, um, you, you know, it's just very easy to, to identify. Um, I really just need to know roughly where 38.2 to 61.8 is. That 23.6 is, is really shallow. You know, if we do even a little bit, bit of a correction, it's likely we'll touch that level. Uh, so you can see we did reach 23.6. We didn't quite reach 38.2, but we did reach the top of that baseline. Uh, so to me, this helps, you know, that this helps place everything within, within the context of the wave principle and how these different tools and strategies work together. Okay. Uh, now let's look at the terminating channel. So we'll draw that by starting from the end of wave two, going to the end of wave four, and then going to the end of wave three. All right, now the Fibonacci relationship is usually that wave five is a 0 0.618 multiple of the distance of waves one through three. And we get, we get so close to that, all right? R remember, trading technical analysis is not set in stone. If, it was, if, if there was a rule that wave five always has to reach a 61.8% multiple of the distance traveled of waves one through three, uh, trading would be so much easier, right? These are guidelines. We get so close, but we do reach the midline. So, so the fact that we're, you know, the fact that we have this bearish divergence in the RSI I was talking about, the fact that we have this ending diagonal pattern that I was talking about, the fact that we're at the midline of the channel, and the fact that we got really close to the 61.8% uh, multiple Fibonacci extension of, of waves one through three is a lot of evidence. It's a lot of evidence telling us to be on the lookout for a turn in trend. All right, so that's how channeling works. It doesn't work in a vacuum. It works when you combine it with everything else that you know. And if this seems like a lot of information, guess what it is? Trading's not easy. It, it can be simple, and if you have the rules and guidelines, it's simply a recipe where you apply the same steps over and over again. Um, and, and yes, that recipe can be complicated at first, but with practice, it becomes easier and it becomes second nature eventually. All right, so I, I told you that I picked this chart for a reason, and it's because wave five, uh, black wave five is not finished yet. So what do you think we're gonna do, guys? Uh, pause the video here. I want you to guess which channel I'm going to draw. All right, so for those of you that said it's the terminating channel, well done. So I start from the end of wave two, go to the end of wave four, and then I bring it to the end of wave three. And then I take my Fibonacci tool, go from the start of black wave one to the end of black wave three to the end of black wave four, and we have a 61.8% multiple that lines up nicely. Uh, depends on how on the time it will take for, for this fifth wave to develop, but either way, the price level is 127.62, right, right here. Uh, so that could line up with the midline of this terminating channel if we really take a, a kind of a choppy, slower approach to this, that would require a less you know exciting trend because it, prices will almost go sideways and it would likely mean we'll get another ending diagonal like we did in wave three blue wave three of black wave uh, sorry in blue wave five of black wave three um, if the euro decides to be a little bit more exciting then we might get you know something like this uh, and and then we see a reversal signal occur around here at the top line of the channel so notice, I'm not saying for sure we're gonna reverse off the midline uh, or we're gonna reverse off of the, the top line of this terminating channel, okay? I, I don't really care. What I care about is keeping an eye on how the price action develops, counting my waves as we're traveling higher, um, and then paying attention to those areas on the chart where multiple things come together. All right, now, quick recap. Let's just draw the other channels on the black waves just to see what we're dealing with. So here's my base channel for black waves one and two. Notice we broke out of the channel uh, and then we tested it as support here as well along black wave three. Okay, but the important thing is that we broke out of the base channel confirming wave three is underway. We found support uh, somewhere between the midline and the, and the bottom line of the base channel, which is fantastic, okay? That's kind of what, what we expect, remember? And then let's look at the trend channel. 
So from the end of wave one to the end of wave three to the end of wave two. And you can see as we break out of that bottom line of this channel, confirms to me that wave four is underway. So this is channeling guys, this is it. Um, you know, I, I try to keep these videos as short and sweet as I can. This one's a little bit longer. Let me know what you think, but I hope this was helpful. I, I love talking about channeling because it's such an underused, underappreciated, um, I guess, trick to know. And if you know how to do it properly, it's going to make your analysis so much more effective. All right, guys, thank you. See you in the next video.